We're out hiking around today, doing a little bit more exploring in the Red Mountain, Arizona area. And we're looking for the wild horses. We haven't seen any yet, but we've seen lots of sign, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, there's manure all over the place. I'll put some of my Civil War era tracking skills to work. We'll, we'll find them. And today we're going to go ahead and answer some more of the questions that have been piling up. So we'll chip away at a few more of those. We've been asked how long it takes to break camp or get ready to hit the road. And the answer to this question really varies. It's proportionate to how long we've been parked at a particular place, I guess. If yeah, we're, for there a month or a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if we're just uh, stopping for an overnight, maybe dry camping in a casino parking lot or something, it's probably only gonna take 15 or 20 minutes to hook the truck up, maybe pull the bedroom slide back in, and basically just hit the road. Now, if we've been someplace for several weeks or a month, you've got a lot of things out, maybe the canopies out, the barbecue grill, the lawn chairs, there's a lot of things outside to get ready as well as inside. You, the longer you're there, you tend to get out more, um, maybe appliances, decorations, different things like right. that. So the longer that you've been someplace, probably the longer it's gonna take for you to yeah. get things back to the way that they go. Generally, it probably, maybe, what, about an hour? You know, yeah. kind of an average to I just sort of get everything ready. I think the longest has been two hours, and that, yeah. <laughs> that's not including things like uh, chores that we want to do, like yeah. we've got to do, uh, I don't know, clean the roof or something, <laughs> yeah. you know, those kinds of things that we uh, might do when we've been somewhere for a while. We'll, we'll have chores like that that need to be done, but typically we're probably allotting ourselves uh, an hour. Yeah. Yeah, but... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, can go, yeah. that can go south pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> Another good question that we've been asked is, does it bother me or us that we have uh, such a, a, a long or large rig that we can't just pull over anywhere and uh, for whatever reason, I guess? Uh, uh, the short answer is yes. <laughs> it, it does bother me, but it doesn't bother me as much as the trade-offs would be for having a smaller rig for our purposes now. We aren't in vacation mode. We're, we're uh, exploring areas for longer periods of time and that uh, can change and probably will change and has been different in, you know, in the past. So for now, uh, no, I'd, I'd rather have the space for what we're doing and the rig that we have right now is is just fine and that's worked for three years um i, I, I there's always change coming <laughs> for us it seems like so I, I i wouldn't doubt that we do something different in in the future i don't know what that is honestly <laughs> but um uh, yeah i guess in short it does bother me sometimes i would love to just be able to pull right over yeah. and take some pictures of yeah, something that's what i was going to say there's been a couple times when there's been something really picturesque that we wish we could have just pulled over quickly and taken a picture of it but for the most part we don't really drive that far in a day and we tend to like you said you know stay in an area to be able to explore it so you know maybe it's something that we can drive back to and get a picture of if we missed it but um yeah, for the I, most part, we're we're good with yeah. the size that we have. Yeah, but I would say, incidentally, that a lot of the times that we've wanted to pull over, we've just been in the truck. So, yeah, so that so works. you know, there's there's been times even in, in a small car that we've had that uh, we've been on trips and I've wanted to pull over at certain places and there just wasn't any place to to pull over. Maybe on the Oregon or California coast or somewhere like yeah. that where it's a narrow road. Maybe there's a guardrail or no guardrail, <laughs> and uh, there's just no area to pull off. So you know, we've experienced that before, and sometimes we've just pulled off at a, a larger uh, place and then hiked back, yeah. you know, and spent some time if time allowed. But in general, I'd say in the short answer is yes, it bothers us, and the long answer is uh, not that the trade-off isn't worth it to us right now. Another question is, what do we carry in the bed of our pickup while we're traveling? And not very much really um, we have a extra five gallon or 4.7 gallon uh, propane tank that right. we use for our barbecue grill and just for emergencies that's pretty much always back there um, we have our squeegee with the long handle for washing the windshield 
Uh, we always put the doormat that we have in front of the stairs in the back of the truck and underneath then, something yeah if, if, if we're yeah. putting other things then we'll put that i don't want it blowing out yeah so. and it's pretty heavy so and then if we're just going to be um unhooking to travel and then hooking back up the next day we'll probably just put our hoses in the back of the truck put the sewer hose into a large um garbage you know, garbage bag, bag. Yeah. Um, and then just put the electric and the water hose back there because the electric hose especially is really heavy and it does take yeah. some work to be able to roll that up and put it back in its crate and, and stow it underneath. So if we're going to be using it the next day, um, we'll just throw it in the back of the truck rather than do or that. Or if we're going to be somewhere where we think that it might not be secure with right. all that copper in it and everything, it's a, <laughs> yeah. it's a good target for some bandits yeah. out there but but other yeah, than that just, yeah the chocks go back there of course when you pick those up and that's about it <laughs> yeah we don't put much back there uh, we we could probably we have a long bed so we could yeah. we could actually have some small bikes uh, up against the uh, back of the cab if we wanted things like that but typically it's just like Susan said the the propane extra tank we put in a, one of those old mill crates <laughs> and then uh, the the um, hoses and stuff and they're all pretty secured in there and we're, we're pretty good about putting everything away uh, properly so that it doesn't fly out of yeah. there we don't want anything like that to happen but uh, for the most part it's uh, pretty much empty yeah. yeah and since we have the Anderson hitch it doesn't take up very much room so there is plenty of room back there uh, at some point we may get some kind of a uh, locking like toolbox sort of uh, thing to be yeah, able to a possibility. store things yeah. at some point but get some things point. out of the cab that <laughs> yeah. I've got some kind of road <laughs> emergencies type stuff that I right. just rather put back there and we'll probably do that soon so yeah. Yep, not, not a whole lot back there, nothing really interesting. <laughs> okay, so we received an, kind of an interesting or different question, is do we run into or see or experience mean people <laughs> in our travels? And yes, we do. <laughs> but we, we run into them pretty much everywhere, and we have probably our whole lives, mm -hmm. you know, we've been around it. But it's not as much as maybe the news might say, mm -hmm. but... Um, I think that because we're at places where people typically have fun a lot of times at some of the resorts or national parks or just, uh, I guess, uh, just fun places to go, the beach, stuff yeah. like that, people are generally having a good time and we really don't see a whole lot of that. Yeah, but I, Yeah, occasionally you'll run into maybe an employee that's having a bad day at work yeah, or that's something. that's a good thing. That, yeah. yeah, that happens. <laughs> that maybe, uh, you know, they're not in the best mood, but overall. <laughs> yeah, because they have to work there. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> so sometimes we do run into, you know, some, some bad days and, and things like that. But um, I think probably... Um, the meanest things that we've run into, which it really wasn't, you know, it's not catastrophic or anything, but uh, we were at a place on the Oregon coast at a, a little restaurant, and I was sitting outside uh, waiting at a, a bench, just uh, probably a good 10, 12 feet from the door, and I had Barkley in front of me, our dog, laying on the ground, uh, probably three or four feet in front of me, and I don't know, six, eight feet from the doorway. And we, we typically, Barkley gets a lot of people walking up to him wanting to, to ask if they can pet him. And they just say, oh, what a pretty dog. They just love Barkley and, and he loves them. Uh, well, we had a guy coming out of the restaurant and he stood in the doorway and looked down at Barkley. And I just kind of uh, paused there because I thought he was going to say something like, can I pet the dog or a nice dog or something like that? And uh, no, he proceeded to yell very loudly, move that effing dog, and a few other really mean uh, comments, and uh, just kind of floored me and all the people that were sitting there. But I went ahead and called Barkley over, and maybe I could have been a little bit more sensitive about <laughs> not having Barkley maybe as close, but... Um, you know, and I, I, I kind of get that, but I don't get the reaction. Yeah. I think that was a little, little over much. the top. Yeah. yeah. So that that was one thing. And ironically, that same day, I had walked near uh, the restroom uh, area of uh, that same uh, beach area. And I had Barkley uh, sitting down uh, on the leash between my feet. 
and he was just in a sitting position and somebody that was probably a good uh, six feet away that was standing beside me happened to finally glance down and see that there was a dog there and he just leaped back uh, and yelled, not everybody's a dog person. <laughs> and I, 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 I guess I didn't quite understand because the Barkley didn't approach him, I didn't approach him, but nonetheless, I, I, I understand that not everybody's a dog person. So I don't know, it wasn't that, it wasn't that mean, it was just a little yeah, uh, just, I was just a little bewildered. It just bewildered. kind of stood out, you yeah. know, it seemed like, well, he Especially wasn't, wasn't really a people person either, I Yeah, I yeah, think. maybe maybe that, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, we, we do run into him, but for the most part, we just let it blow over and we, we try to steer clear of areas where we think a whole lot of mean people might hang out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wherever but, that is. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's okay, we, we deal with it, but yeah, it's not all happy people everywhere, <laughs> of course. The last question is often people will ask, how can we help or how can we get involved? Yeah, there's uh, probably the easiest ways to, to help us or to get involved is to help us make uh, more videos <laughs> by liking, comment, and sharing uh, the videos. It, it, it encourages us to make more and it also uh, presents the videos to more people. By you sharing them with more people, more people get to see them. Uh, it brings more excitement to the channel and it, it encourages us to uh, make more. And so just simply clicking the, the thumbs up, the like, um, subscribing to the channel. Yeah. And the, the good thing about subscribing to the channel is that's gonna alert you when we actually uh, produce a video. That is, if you click the little bell next to the uh, subscribe that uh, turns on notifications you you'll want to make sure to do that and that's on the uh, on the the YouTube channel um, you can also subscribe on our website at wildonthego.com and what that does is just let you know if we have posted something there now that's going to be a little bit redundant because it's going to let you know that we posted videos on that site um, but it will also let you know if we post an article or some kind of update or something uh, there but I think probably the uh, a way that you can really get involved if you want is with our, our Patreon. If you go to our Patreon page, you can become uh, uh, involved with us as, as a team. And we have a few people that are doing that now. And it's been a lot of fun. We, we've got some good things planned for that site. We want to put some things on there that we don't put on the channel. We don't want to take away from the channel here, but we do want to put things on there that would be extras for people. And it's also a way for you to get more time out of us if you need it for consulting or those kinds of things. But you can just go over to the Patreon page, take a look. There's no cost to take a look. And, you know, we also will post updates there free of charge. We're not going to charge people to come find out where we're at or what we're doing. It's just a place that we can do that as well and kind of have it all in one place there. We don't really have a lot of that liberty on the the YouTube site to post a lot of uh, updates and 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 things uh, in a comment type of way or a quick way. So Patreon's going to do that for us uh, very easily, so you can uh, get uh, plugged in there. So that that's a great help to us. Can you think of anything no, else? No, I think that's it. So please like, comment, share, subscribe, and check out Patreon. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. Susan, come here, look at this rock. Ow!